something like that with Nav. That is my name. How you doing and how you're feeling? Hope you're doing a okay. I hope everything is uh, uh, pretty fine with you. This has been a very, very uh, unique weekend for Malaysians, especially all the voting, all the drama. And uh, let's see, where does that lead to? We're not going to get into that. Uh, welcome to the show a podcast. I told you that uh, the month of November, I'm going to fill in as many episodes as possible, back to back episodes, because I just want to see uh, what happens. Because uh, I'll be honest with you, past couple of months, I've been a bit lagging a little bit behind. So I've decided for November, December, I'm going to pack it up with as many shows as possible, as many talents as possible, especially this guy. The last I had a conversation with him, I think it's close to two years ago. I couldn't believe it. It was that long. And he's back again. This year seems to be an amazing year for his music and also his shows. So it's best for me to bring him on board and uh, find out more about it. But in the meantime, uh, before I do that, i got to make a couple of shout outs. A big hello to our friends from, uh, uh, let's say, uh, who is these three guys again? Oh, yes, Pamule, My Creative, and also Chintana. Thank you so much for supporting the podcast. we got more coming up for you. I'll tell you all about that on the website. And now, Brendan, how are you, man? Hi. Hi, thanks good. for having me. All it's good, good man. man. How are you? It's great, man. Always a pleasure to have you on board. I was just, just mentioning earlier, I thought we had the conversation somewhere a few months ago or something like that. And then realized it's close <laughs> to two years, man. Yeah, it's been a while. It's, it's been, been a, a very long time, man. One, yeah. Yeah, it's so, I didn't realize it, man. It was going on and on. It's like looking back at the videos, I was like, shit, this is, this is such a long gap. And I wonder why didn't I have you earlier before this? <laughs> but anyway, congratulations. 2022 seems to be an exciting year for you. Yes, thank you. It has been it has been uh, pretty pretty jam packed. Things are Good. looking a lot better than twenty twenty oh. and twenty twenty one. Yes, so come out with a bang, man! You actually yeah. came out with a bang for twenty twenty two. Your concert, uh, "Love of Life." Wow, I must say it was one of the best production. The entire I sorry, I couldn't make it to the concert, but I watched the entire video, the whole set, the recording. The production-wise, the music, the performances, the whole package—it was an amazing one, man. You pulled it. You pulled off one of the greatest shows uh, so far for this year for me on a personal level. Hey, thank you. Uh, it was very un, un. It was unplanned in a way. Uh, really, I just came across. I came across the venue. Um, late last year, PJ Pack in Wanutama, and um. I was kind of sold the minute I saw it. I was like, hey, let's just put a deposit down and get this going. I didn't really know what I was going to do with the space. Okay. And um, what happened was uh, me and my siblings who are all in their own field of work, mainly around uh, PR and advertising. Okay. So they, they came on board to... Uh, help plan the entire production of the show, actually. Well, so that's the two a, months, right? About uh, two months. Uh. I booked it in I booked it in December and uh, the show was in March. The show was yeah, in so March. pretty much about uh, two months, like, technically speaking. Yeah, it was uh, kind of rushed. Uh, there maybe should have been more planning on my part. Um, you don't realize how much work actually goes into something like this. The pre A lot. Is, yeah, it's a lot. And uh, thankfully, schedules worked out all right. And uh, we managed to pull this off la, in, a, in a short time, actually. It was beautiful, man. I've always pictured... Um, people or other musicians or artists and uh, your, your group or rather your field to produce something like this. Always been a dream of watching something as good as this because every time, you know, when you, when you go to a show, you check out a show, it's always been, uh, you know, is is geek. Everybody goes live, make noise, and then you have uh, videos taken from cameras, you know, production sound, you know, details as such. Uh, people don't pay attention to, but for you, in your case, you had a concert and for those who missed the concert, had the uh, privilege to check it out all over again on uh, online, especially on YouTube and all, which is, Amazing man, the production. Whoever your team was with you on that that particular yeah. concert, I did an amazing job on that one. Yeah, the team was good. Uh, we managed to keep it very independent in a way. Um, all the talent were 
the talent on stage were mainly people I have worked with before on separate occasions. And um, the talent off stage, like the visual, the visual um, director for the, for the effects that we had on the LCD screen and the sound guys. And these were all just very, just friends also, or new friends that okay. we made and all very like, Hey, let's come together and and put on a great show. You know, uh, money and all was secondary. You know, everything was very like let's just work together and pull off a good show. And Speaking of money and such, uh, this the, uh, production as such doesn't come cheap. It definitely no, doesn't come cheap. No, it, it because I saw the whole uh, the AV uh, specs of whatever you've been using for this whole old production or the, or the concert itself. It's an expensive matter. But my, my curious, uh, I was just curious on one thing for an, an independent artist to come up with such a concert and also the production, the whole work. Was it a very, a very expensive affair? Was it like, uh, whoa, was it like, okay, can, not too bad. And what was it like? We had sponsors, did people come in as on pro bono basis, the contra basis no, and things like um, that? Or was it all yours? Everybody... Everybody got paid. Um, okay. Yeah. The cost was, I mean, it was high for me. You know, it's my okay. first time doing a concert and um, we rode on ticket sales to, okay. as long as ticket sales covered the cost to me, that would have been a win already. You know, doesn't matter. Like to me, especially like it wasn't about the money. You know, okay. it's about just doing the show and making sure I can pay the other talent who are coming on board. The other talents who are coming on board okay. because, you know, it's their work and their time. Like I can do something for free for myself. That's fine. But when I'm asking other people, other professionals to come on board and um, creatively input and uh, invest and then with your time as well, like, you know, Everybody needs to work, you know. I understand that very much as well. So, um, thankfully, like we managed to, we managed to cover the cost of okay. everything just from ticket sales and um, and a bit more, you know. So, to me, it was a win because um, initially it seemed like we weren't going to break even, and even mm -hmm. if we didn't break even. Um, the cost of not breaking even, that would have been okay. Because okay. Because like, you know, you just, I guess you fall short of a couple of thousand bucks or something. It's, it's, you can find exceptional back. Like. Yeah. You know, it's not like you're falling short of like 10,000 ringgit and okay, you're a bit, you know, you're, yeah, you're a bit. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we tried to get sponsors. Uh, we managed one, uh, which was, uh, Actually, we managed to. One was Fred Perry, and they came on board uh, for clothing. So okay. they they clothed me for the for boat sets. So we had two sets throughout the night, and there were two different outfits. Uh, okay, for the night, yeah. So they came on board, but monetary wise, it was all our cost, lah. Really, wow, yeah. that's 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 tough, man, because. I've, I've spoken to many concert promoters down here because one of the basic things they always talk about in organizing such a concert, uh, they never really rely on ticket sales. Ticket sales is an additional bonus uh, for them. It's always been uh, the, the sponsorship that covers most of the cost of organizing a concert as such, whether it's small or big. So the focus has always been on sponsorship, work on the sponsorship. Do you think that if your planning was a little longer, you had more, let's say six months or whatever, you would have focused on sponsorship more yeah, than, uh, definitely. ticket sales. Definitely. Uh, we came close to securing one sponsor, but okay. that fell through um, closer towards the date. But we were kind of happy that it didn't happen because um, we were happy to just have had done the entire thing by ourselves without, okay. without depending on somebody. Um, nice. Yeah, we had clothing sponsors, so that was, that was good. It, it was, was nice start. to have a yeah, nice to have a well-known brand on board, and um, 
yeah, we by the end of it, even when we were done, again money aside, like I was just, I've been trying to advocate the independent, the yeah. independency of being an artist. So, uh, being, I think it was meant to be that that sponsorship did not come through, and okay. that we managed to pull off this entire concert by ourselves, really. Yeah, which which is uh, hats off to you guys and your team, whoever's been supporting you for this uh, concert. It's fantastic, man. Seriously, you have opened up the gates or the doors for many other um, independent artists who have an idea to come up with the concert as such. Because instead of just focusing on the uh, a smaller venue and smaller outlets like clubs and pubs, you now have an opportunity. You have proven that concerts as such can be done for many independent artists. Instead of just focusing on the that's you know just performing at sponsored yeah, events, correct. you know this kind of thing. So it's like it's all about the effort of uh, doing the whole thing. And but have you yeah. have you shared this idea with everybody else to encourage them to do something similar to yours? Um, and I mean anybody who speaks to me about the concert, a lot of them actually uh, are under the impression that somebody was managing it for me, and that I was approached. By somebody, and we work together. Nobody really uh, knows that we did it absolutely by ourselves. Wow! And uh, when they do, I do tell them, you know, same with uh, same with how when I first started recording my own music, and somebody else would have told me about how accessible it can be for you to go and just record your own music without depending on a record label or music labels to to fund you you know um you can invest in your own equipment you know everything's on youtube everything's online you can produce great work really if you spend the time practicing and honing your craft uh you're able to do that so when it came to the concert yeah i i do tell people that you can do it you know i i encourage people to try and do it by yourselves but You know, I mean, just like me, also, I was scared also when I when I first did it. You know, the numbers can be scary. You know, the numbers can really scare you, especially when you don't have backing. You know, and your yeah, backing true, is, true. and you're just and I'm just an independent artist. You know, and I dare say that a lot of my income is not based on my own music. It's based on the other shows I do, the corporate functions, the cover gigs. You know, the charity market. Okay. Gigs. But um, yeah, I'm trying to work towards getting to a point where my music is also just as sustainable. You know, uh, I think I think this is a country. good start. I think it's a yeah, good it start. Is. Well, what it you've done, is said, because like, well, like what he said, everybody has this perception that no, you want to, in order for you to do something like this, you got to have that backing, you got to have that sponsors, you know, all all those things that. Uh, People are afraid. People are skeptical to actually do something, but you have proven them wrong with um, this particular concept that it is doable. And now, yeah. only thing you can take it to the next level on how to make it grow bigger or the the frequency of the concert itself. Um, it's that, once a year, lah. It'll be once yeah, a year one, now. Yeah, once a year, which is nice. So the next but one will be next year. Yeah, it's actually planned for mid next year. Wow, yeah. this is uh, this time planning quite long, lah. This one planning a bit longer, <laughs> <laughs> trying to get now maybe like focus on some sponsorships. <laughs> yeah, actually, I mean, you got you got the whole template already. You can just prove it to everybody and whoever wants to come on board. Ah, uh, you have the whole show to show that hey, it is a success and it could yeah. get it can go bigger itself. Just like Rock the World when they first started off, it was pretty much just a normal small gig, and the next minute you didn't know it was a huge concert all by itself. Yeah, yeah I can go on that part, man. But uh, have you ever considered, since you are championing for the independent scene, you have been supporting the music scene a lot on the independent side. Have you ever thought about having other concerts for somebody else or help organize it? You know, like coming up, I wouldn't want to call you an event management company or talent management company, but uh, to have organize to to organize more of these sorts of concerts for others. Have you ever had plans of that part? Yeah, actually. Because of this concert, I had to start my own company, which is actually oh. called uh, Very Indie Events. Nice. And that's the concert was the first uh, the first project under the company. 
And that was also, uh, I briefly mentioned to you prior to the interview about the, the f- online festival I was doing. Yes. Yes. Chandana. Yeah. So that was called a very indie festival. Okay. So, um, what I've been, I haven't gotten to it yet. Um, but what I've been planning is to, I used to run a couple of these shows at the B in Publica over the years since maybe about 20, I want to say 2017, 2018. Mm-hmm. Um, I used to do a series called a very indie showcase where I would uh, get a couple of acts per showcase that were independent and maybe people had not heard of before and uh, they would do a set or something. And so I was running this for a couple of months and then every end of the year, I would do a very indie Christmas showcase. It's just a Christmas party really. And, but it's all our local talents like, uh, get like together Jumero. jamming and put up a yeah, show. It's like Jumero, Nadir, uh, Battle Bloom, I think. After a while, uh, plus 2 dB, just, just a bunch of indie fillers I got to know and would just throw a party. And uh, so when I started the company, I thought, okay, very indie events would be great. And um, now I'm trying to kick that off again, but okay. uh, I have yet to. So maybe maybe next year I would I would work out something. Yeah. Nice, nice. It's nice to see more gigs because I'm I was one of the happiest guys Uh, when I was looking through all social media, we were receiving your WhatsApp messages. I, apart from uh, you, others were sending in messages, dude, there's gigs here and there. So there was a lot of gigs going on back to back here, there and everywhere, which is amazing. It was just nice to see more yeah. gigs coming out. Right? But at the very same time, I'm also a bit uh, worried that uh, too many of it is also bad for you. Not only for you, uh, as in your shows, too many of your shows, but too many shows going on back to back your crowd seems to be here spread out or having the options to choose which one to go and how yeah. frequent you have to go to. Yeah. So which is kind of, uh, you know, it's not, it's not like a, you don't support the artist, but you just have so many options to look at. So the cake Correct. is getting, the slice is getting thinner and thinner by the day because there's too many on going on simultaneously. That's, that seems to be one of the issues I've, I've noticed for me personally, actually. Yeah, it's true. Uh, I've been told about it. I've been advised about it as well uh, because um, it is, if you want to think about it, it's detrimental a bit to the brand that yeah. is my music. So, you know, if you're like going to do a ticketed showcase somewhere, somebody will be like, oh, why do I need to go for this when he's playing for free next week yeah. at some other venue? So that just comes down to maybe um, you deciding which shows you promote and which you don't. Um, okay. Because to me, I always believe as if I'm playing at a venue that has live music, it is not the artist, whoever's performing really, it's not mm-hmm. their job to bring people yeah. to the venue. You know, you have your venue. It's actually your responsibility. Your, as the venue owner, yeah, it's your responsibility to bring people. There's still a, there's still a slightly above minority impression by venue organizers or venue owners that we need yeah. to bring people, you know? Yeah, I had, I had this exact conversation with Julio a couple of months back or is it last year? Uh, this, this was the thing is I was worried also because uh, this happened with the DJ scene. You oh. see, at initial stages of DJs, your job was to come play music, party on, and that's about it. So the promotion, yeah. marketing, uh, whether the customers come in or whoever, that's not the DJ's problem. And yeah, then correct. it came to a certain point that the question started in, okay, fine, if I want to feature you or hire you to perform in my club, how many people can you bring in? What is your marketing yeah. plan? You know, those kind of things, which is, I find it to be a, a, an irresponsible thing for a club or, or for a venue to do because that's not the job of the performer. You're correct. there to entertain or rather to perform. And uh, as days go by, that's what, ha- that's what happened with a lot of DJs. You started having your own list. You, so you got to have the invitations, bring as, as many people as possible, come up with the flyer, posters, and the whole works that seem to have changed the uh, so-called wave or whatever the, the club scene was uh, moving on to from the days I used to spin till now. But I also noticed that happening with the musicians. A lot yeah, of musicians it, it are facing that lot. same problem. 
and i i think i mean if a venue wants to do that um i think it's all right as long as there's compensation you know if i'm going to yeah. bring if i'm going to bring 20 people to your venue um what if they spend you know 80 bucks per head or 100 bucks per head you know that is 2000 ringgit that i've brought to your business you know and what did i get in return for that i you know maybe it's i get like less than a third of that in terms of my payment you know yeah or something and that's like if that. you're lucky if you're getting paid because there's also cases Correct. where uh some of the artists will this organize at a particular venue and it's more of a profit sharing thingy yeah you know um <laughs> that also is another thing you know i mean you can understand because if they i guess if they keep it open as per a usual business day there's your cost you know there's your yeah. cost for running a running a space so i can understand taking some of the ticket sales or whatever you know but if you're not doing the ticketed showcase then if you're going to bring people that's extra work for the artist or the performer to do so you know maybe if you organize like for you know a certain percentage of bar sales or something yeah. or from that table that you bring okay you know you take 50% of whatever that table spending you know that's it's something rather than yeah it's just so coming back to your question of it being back to back and playing too many shows um yeah the good thing about what i do is now a lot of my shows that i play at now are solo they are okay. solo and in that sense yeah some people have options some people do just come anyway okay or they'll message me and say hey where are you playing tonight but um my shows now about my music and some other ticketed showcases they're all full band which people oh, okay. don't which people don't really see often with okay, me, okay. i guess which i'm trying to change and uh yeah i've been advised about the frequency of the shows and it's just a matter of like at the end of the day if people want to come they come you know yeah i believe like um see when it came to i was doing this for a while already and when it came to the concert um a lot of people showed up i could see that so the crowd we, we sold about 80% of tickets so that was great and i didn't really like and that was just when the omicron wave had just come right. in so that affected a lot of sales really because we thought we would have been pretty easy to sell out and uh but we hit 80% and we were still like okay that's great so well you can also consider it as testing waters uh yeah, to be more precise know, in a trying concept. time i was probably yeah. the second or third public concert since i know when i first saw that the message up. was like this guy crazy what you doing it yeah. right now <laughs> <laughs> yeah so like <laughs> yeah but but anyway it worked out so to me it's just like it's just a matter of which shows you yeah. promote and honestly if people want to come they'll come anything, huh? i mean at the end of the day like we all went through financial struggles through the pandemic so yeah. you can understand when people can't make a show or they can't uh, pay for a ticketed show and they want to come for a show where i'm playing for free that's fine you know to me it's yeah. just like i'll just do me you know i'll play as much as i can and You know, if I see you at my show, I see you at my show, lah. Well, you can also consider it, consider it as a marketing uh, strategy for your music, your identity yeah. itself. Correct. Yeah, there's one at thing. At the same time, with all these shows, like now, when I go to play a show, maybe I would say seventy percent of the time now, there's a request for my own music at a at a bar, which okay. doesn't usually happen. You know, usually it's your your famous covers or whatever so when i no, get a request for you i i personally haven't had the chance to come and visit you where is always clashing of timing but honestly that's what i would expect if anywhere you are i would love to listen to all your originals because i've like i said i've been a fan of your music for a very long time and every single time you release a track it's always on loop so i'm pretty sure this year you know the spotify what have you been listening to the whole year yeah. the year and thing yeah. that come out 
your name's going to be top of the list. I think like that's what's going to be happening, man. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for listening. Thanks yeah. for supporting the music. It's it's amazing because, like I said, it's something out of this world. It you have taken it. I would I wouldn't want to use to say that or being playing your music in Malaysia alone is considered are not so good. You got to go internationally. But I think in your case, it needs to be spread out more to yeah. different market, Asia and all this kind of stuff because. You have your production wise, the quality, the style of singing, the music. It is on a different playing level right now. You can't really, I mean, for me, like I said, this is my personal point of view. Uh, for me, it's no longer something that you play locally. It's something, it's, you've got to take it, it abroad. That's nice you to gotta, feel, uh. Yeah, you seriously, you should, man. You should. Because when you do comparison, you're a music listener yourself. Yeah. Put it side by side and you can notice that the, the, you can do the comparison yourself. And ask yourself this question, why am I just selling it here locally? Yeah. Yeah, I think I need to come up with a better marketing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you should, Ben. You should, absolutely. <laughs> but after these concerts and, you know, uh, for the past two years, you have uh, uh, gotten yourself involved or rather learned a lot of new things during from the break time you had for the during the pandemic and coming up with the concerts as such. Has this impacted in your music itself on the idea of writing your songs in your know, production wise have you has it changed much or I, I, do you have plans of taking it uh, further or changing it more your know, identity uh, your music your sounds um so what has happened right now in the last couple of months i've managed to put together a permanent band so the bands i used to work with before this for any of my original music they've all been sessionists from different uh from different projects that we've worked on separately and just recently i sat down with a couple of uh musicians who i kind of handpicked in a way okay. to ask them if they would be keen on committing to being a part of my outfit so that um i have this consistent band we are taking a direction into the doing the full band sound thing okay so um which has not been done before everything has been kind of acoustic um only my third record was full band but um that was done again with sessionists and it's not done with people who've been you know say working with me for a couple of years non stop okay. you know so i'm trying to start that now so that by the time we get to the next concert um it would more be it would be more Complete. like yeah in the sense that, and there's more synergy there's more chemistry yeah. and everybody's treating the music as their own rather sure. than just uh my music being translated into a band setting you know okay okay so now we are now we are working working on new stuff and reworking old stuff and uh, hopefully by not hopefully by the next concert uh this will be showcased uh i guess in a more how to say it will be the first time so we are doing now now what we are doing is we're doing a couple of satellite shows building up to the concert next year so nice. we did one in Uh, this place called Jama in Solaris and then yes. we did another one in Fono in KL um so now what we're doing is we're just doing little showcases that cater to maybe 50 60 people just to give them a, a new, feel yeah a feel of what the new band sounds like and um yeah so far response has been good and our first uh single should be out in January. Nice. I'm looking yeah. forward for that one. But for you as for you as Brandon De Cruz, you're a solo artist all this while coming up playing with a band, um is it is it tough to have that so called, you know, more people involved or in especially when it comes to your performances and such, is it difficult or is it easy or is it something that you've been anticipating for a very long time? Which one is it I, for you? Is it I think the only difficult part about being in a band setting now is uh, organizing schedules really because okay. everybody is busy everybody's got their own work or something you know it's 
it's not just their own work it's their own personal lives and then now you're factoring in something constant and consistent and kind of permanent into everybody's life so um finding a balance of that has been the biggest challenge i think but aside from that music wise it is easy easy wow. because the the musicians that have agreed to come on board they are all just fantastic in their own in their own instrument you know okay. and it's so easy to translate something or send a message across to uh to to see where the music goes you know to to explore and experiment it takes a short while you know of course with anything it's trial and error but the understanding between everybody is very is very um easy it's very comfortable it's very comfortable okay. and the only thing i'm getting used to is i'm so used to my own perspective of how it should sound whereas like when you are talking to a drummer then the drummer would have a different perspective of exactly. what should happen here the guitarist would be like oh maybe you should do this here and then trying to then when i give them a demo now of something i've written it near immediately changes its entire course and it becomes this whole other experience and i'm also like wow i didn't i didn't expect that i didn't even see it happening and so it's in that in that way it's very comfortable it's fun and it's uh it's a new experience a lot it's a new experience well at least at least it's working out for you because it's not e- not not an easy task especially if you've been a solo artist uh you have your idea you have that whole plan of how your music should sound uh the direction of it and all and when you have other inputs it kinds not it doesn't ha- really work out for many people because it's like no this is what i want it to sound like this is how it should be like so when you have a band when you have multiple inputs as such you got to have people that uh, understands your music better yeah so when you enhance it it doesn't have any much of a problem there but uh, is this lineup a fixed lineup have you like okay this is it i you no more changes in the band lineup yeah that's the permanent lineup uh Who's who? we have we have uh ashwin gobina okay you I think you had Yes, him, I did. Right? We have Ashley on drums. Couple. Um we have Kiran Jumawan on lead guitar. Okay. Um Jamie Gunther who I knew she was going to be there. Yeah, Jamie on bass and uh and Gabriel Gabriel Januarius on keys. Yeah. This is and a good lineup, man. Yeah. This is a very good lineup. Yeah, it's a good lineup like the uh all of them actually are pretty intimidating sometimes because like they're so <laughs> they're so good at what they do like it's i sometimes feel like whoa man like step man, up step are, up step yeah, up yeah <laughs> yeah i got to up my game here you know <laughs> luckily nobody else is like singing you know so i got the singing thing down maybe a bit and okay, right. some songwriting but yeah your singing is like i mean man you don't have i mean tell me honestly how many of them have your style of singing or your vocals man it's like i I'll be honest with you lady it's like every time I listen to you I get so jealous as like shit man if only you whack this girl like, why does he have voice like that and I don't have it why can he sing like this and I can't you know that that frustration is there I'll tell you I admit it man can man just uh, try me just practice no, trust me yeah. I do, it's like we suffered enough during the pandemic we don't need any more suffering man. but uh, uh, speaking of music are uh, you uh, just before you came up the get, uh, get your vote uh, you had a single call you released this year right Yes, correct. And the production was it all you or did you have people involved uh, coming up with no, the concept of that song? You was me. It was me entirely me. The track before that also Our Worlds. Yeah. That was also entirely me. And just me in my little studio thing here. I kind of like the whole concept was easy just walk around with the guitar from one spot to another spot. Your production has that was has, that was not you actually that was uh, that which was, was love, love her okay that okay, was okay. love yeah that you was, was love. you was which you other? you just Did came you? out uh, you just came out uh, in August a few weeks. I think yeah August in August yeah. love so that one doesn't have a music video no it doesn't have a okay okay then I got myself yeah. mixed up with the other one and this okay. Yeah, I was like they, watching they, the video they kind of sound similar I, I can okay, understand yeah. that <laughs> then you came out with their 
uh, get your vote. I kind of like the music video because your your image this year with the long hair and all is like, ooh, new <laughs> look. It's all pandemic hair. Uh, that's what I was wondering. Like, you know, since when did yeah. he decide? What made you decide to grow your hair and start out going with this look, man? Any any specific reason no, because for this we couldn't image? Go to a, we couldn't go to a barber for a very long time. Okay. When it wasn't allowed and I was initially very very cautious about covid as anybody was yeah so i just stayed away and then it still no my hair was long and i was like just leave it like that just, just leave it like it's a good look on you man it's a good look at you uh, yeah, yeah get your vote was just a i won't call it a single it was just a, a promo a little just a little project <laughs> i just simply Heck. But yeah. surprising enough, the, I, the music video was nice, man. I, I really liked the music video. As much as it was simple, it was something that you could feature in any other songs uh, for that one, man. It's nice. It's nice. I like the whole concept. <laughs> Thanks. And, I, and that was your idea too, on the whole vi- music video? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything was just... Oh, it was shot right? here. It was actually, I was just standing in the back here, really. That's shot. Like, like, okay, organize concert, can sing, play music, shoot videos. Like, yeah, is, is there anything right. that you don't do... Uh, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Oh man, God, God, I'm sure there are a lot of things. I don't. Yeah. I can't. I can't swim. <laughs> uh, really? Here? Oh swim. man! Please, <laughs> please, with the, all the flooding going on in KL, start picking up the, that that thing, yeah. man. I've been practicing. La. I've been trying to practice getting trying there, practice. but but yeah, it's too long. All that puppy flaps and all this kind of stuff. It works. La. That's how I learned. Correct. <laughs> So what's next for you, Ben? Uh, where, what's going on there for this year? Anything else uh, to wrap up 2023, uh, 2022? Because I know um, next year your plans of your shows coming up. Uh, music, you just gave us a hint that uh, uh, you will be coming up with singles and maybe an album, I suppose, 2023? Um, yeah, I would say singles first. I think I'm just doing the singles thing first. La. Okay. And um, we'll see how that's going. If there's an album, it would be closer towards um, when the concert is happening. Okay. And uh, right now, I'm just working on I'm working on a Christmas tune actually, so nice. that will be out. Uh, that will be out soon. That is not with the band. That's just me doing my own thing. Um, aside from that, it's just a busy couple of weeks ahead because. Of just shows, um, yeah, the, the year end on, thingy, yeah, the year end thingy, you know, your Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, New Year's Eve, New Year's Day thing. And finish the budget year, uh, finish the yeah, budget month year, uh, events, yeah, and, it's, it's a nice event. Uh, if I, I think the next show that I'll be planning around my own music would be in January, if anything. I don't think nice, it's out of the soon, bang once but, again, man, Go yeah, on, man. and then work towards uh, the concert. La. The concert. Yeah. Cool, man. But how, how do you find, I mean, doing all this, you've been, uh, I'm very happy for you that uh, you've been busy doing all this kind of stuff. But uh, just to sum, summarize the whole year after the pandemic, how do you feel? Has, it, has the industry improved? Um, I mean, the whole works, is it much easier now to do things compared to the last year? Uh, the previous, um, before the pandemic? This, this oh, uh, man. To some level, before the pandemic, it was also great because, um, you know, people were not worrying about a virus, you know. Yeah. And everybody was just doing their thing. Now there, is, there seems to be a... Paranoia. Seems to be like an, yeah, like an unspoken method to, to functioning anything, whether it's organizing mm-hmm. shows or whatnot. It's not as the same as it was, but um, this year has been great in the sense that, I mean, there were a lot of like postponed, cancelled functions and shows and concerts and weddings. And so there's like sort of like an influx, you know, of there's just an overload of everything going on now. Like every weekend, every nearly every day, something's going on somewhere. There's a show here. There's a corporate Especially weddings, here. man. Weddings, you know. I got a whole so, lot of wedding invitations which I couldn't attend. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit crazy. And so in that sense, it's great. Uh, I have a feeling by next year, things are going to slow down a bit. Or by the end of next year, things might slow down. But 
you know, we are still, we are just only now about a year, reaching a year since things opened up a bit, you know, and things only properly opened up like maybe in April, you know. Yeah, pretty much around that time. Yeah, because March was my concert and March was still the Omicron. People were still masking indoors and yeah. now it's like slowly easing up. Uh, people are less worried about COVID and more worried about just the regular flu nowadays, you know. And uh, it's been good. I'm hoping it continues. I'm hoping this. Uh, I think my next year should be okay. I think the next year worries should only be on the economical side of the whole thing, and yeah. uh, not much of the so-called pandemic or virus or whatsoever. Even But now, all these things are going to trickle down. You know. Like, yeah, it's, it's going to trickle down to events and yeah. money and oh my god, I'm going to lapas like, ground because now even even for the past uh, this past couple of weeks, uh, everybody was putting putting a lot of things in, on hold because of the elections and stuff like that. Yeah, correct. and now that is over, I think everybody's going to go back onto overdrive, starting campaigns. I mean, whoever's got projects going on, I think is is going to be a boost. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Yeah, I think I think the. Yeah, I'm just hoping this continues. It's been a great 2022, yeah, it, really. Yeah, yeah. Because so. as much as everyone is worried, no, oh, it's all slowed down, slowed down. But I, I don't know. I see. It's, it's been a great year. I've seen more shows happen uh, this year than it did a year before or the pandemic. Yeah. What's going on? I'm, I'm losing track of who's playing where, who's performing what, what songs are coming out. It's like whoa, everything is going on back to back, and I among. All people decided to do the same thing by overflowing my podcast with a back-to-back -back episodes, which I didn't think it through. I mean, it's good to see, lah. It's good to see. It's yeah. nice to know that that uh, your podcast is still going. Also, you know. Yeah, I decided. Yeah. I'm not. It's. It's. I can't let it go, man. It's. It's like it was supposed to be a fun thing during pandemic to occupy. Then I realized that so many great artists have so much to say and so much to, uh, so much to share so i just want to try to bring it out as much as possible before the year and hopefully i can fulfill my task for 2022 uh, and then All start right, fresh nice. again in 2023 keep it up, man. Man. Keep it up. like yeah. it's nice to see like we also started a bunch of us started a, a the waiting room podcast during, yeah the waiting room i was following that, that i know it's like what happened that that just died like we we all <laughs> once once things opened up we just Everybody got busy with their own thing, and yeah. we were like, "But we I were was, so I was excited for about two years." It. Yeah, I was so excited that here I had gang lah. Okay, he has his own show. He has his show. It's like okay lah. <laughs> Next me, Rene. Nope, disappeared, disappeared, no, disappeared. disappeared. I was like, I feel like I'm the only one left in the room right now. You know that kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> so but, what did they do? They thought up. they were going to yeah. play together lah. But it's good, man. I'm very happy. It's like, like I said before, the the purpose of this particular podcast is basically it's not about. Who, Publicity is not about marketing or whatever stuff like that. It is to share what everyone has, their work, yeah. the art. Because thank you, the amazing talents that came out. It's like during this whole period of time, I've discovered so many, so many great talents. Man, apart from you, I don't have to say that goes without saying. Your your, your repetition precedes you. It's like others who came on board. Guys, I saw eighteen year old kids who came out with dance music. Seventeen year old kid, SPM boom. We haven't completed yet. They came up with so many great tracks on Spotify. It's like, whoa, it's it's amazing. It's I'm very happy that industry has changed so much. Now we just need the right bodies to start paying money for yeah. it. That's the <laughs> uh, most important. Is, that's that's another. That's a whole other. Yeah, topic. yeah, I know, man. It just needs the money, lah. Like, need the money to pay the bills, lah. Like. Yeah. Hopefully soon, man. Nah. Hopefully soon, man. Nah. <laughs> let's, let's hope for the sponsors and marketing people uh, to come up with ideas and concept or for how to. Sell your music. That's the most important yeah. thing. Yeah, correct. Yeah, that's true. Well, yeah, that's how it works, lah. Anyway, Brendan, thank you so much, man. Thank you so much thank for you. taking the time and coming on board their podcast. Our music, music wise, all you have to do is just check out Brendan's YouTube page or Spotify page. I'll put the whole link on the website. You can check it out. Trust me, I have to warn you in advance that it is addictive. <laughs> it is very addictive. Once you listen to the track, it'll go on loop over and over again. And till today, like, I just can't get rid of the, that song Murong from my head. Ah, uh, that's nice. <laughs> I just couldn't get rid of that song. And then when I saw the YouTube video of your performances, the two strikes together, it's like, Allah, he had to do it. Now the song is going to be running in my head over and over again. It's like, uh, thank it's you. Thank track. you very much for listening and supporting the music and for oh, having me on your podcast. La. 
Thank, thank you, you man. It's a pleasure. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, hopefully, you don't have to wait another two years before the next chat, lah. Hey, no, let's not. <laughs> yeah, well, let's not wait. Keep me posted on what's going on with you, and I'll share more of it. And remember, follow right. follow Brendan on his Instagram, his uh, Facebook page, his YouTube, his Spotify, and also he's on TikTok. He is not one of those guys who dances on TikTok, but he, he does stuff on TikTok. Yeah, there's odd stuff on TikTok. <laughs> yeah, so just follow him there. I've been, do you dance? No, do you dance on TikTok? No, no I haven't seen any videos no, yet. No, I've okay, not good. danced. Don't. Yeah, not don't go, don't. unless it's like you know, unless at a party and I'm having a yeah. good time. Yeah, not yeah, not really. for recording. Because everybody seems to be trying to dance on TikTok. I don't know why, for some particular yeah. reason. <laughs> I don't know. It's man. a thing, lads. It's the fever. It's the fever. It's the fever huh? Let's find out what happens next. You never know, like next year you come back to me and said, "Yeah, we started dancing on TikTok with yeah. my new band." <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would be the day. Anything could happen. Anything, Anything could happen. Could... Brendan, thank you so much, Brody. I'll Thanks see you in the you. future, and hopefully, you catch one of your shows, upcoming shows. Anything is open for public uh, in the next couple of weeks. Um. Oh, public. What is it today? Oh, tomorrow. The next two days, I'm in Penang, actually. Okay. I'm playing in China House and another place called Mike's Place in Love Lane. Okay. Um Thursday I'm at a venue in Publica called Elephant. Room. Nice. And Nice. Um Friday and Saturday I'm in Langkawi, supposedly. Whoa. Yeah. Nice so place, a, man. Nice place busy, to jam there. Yeah, it's a busy week. It's a busy week. Good. Good. It fills the pocket. It grows your bank account, so no complaints. No complaints. Yeah, man. Take care, dude. I'll have All a right. chat with you Take soon, care. man. See you. Bye.